Arkansas Pilgrim here again. Well, this isn't Arkansas Pilgrim. This is a Royal Berkey water filter. Uh, I didn't think I was uh, presentable for polite company, so I didn't do a, a face shot of me at the beginning. But what I am going to do is talk about how I handled having this Royal Berkey water filter in our kitchen. Uh, you know, a while back I showed, you know, you know, assembling it and the fact that we have it. But uh, I wanted to show that, you know, there's an issue we have actually in our kitchen and maybe you would have it in your kitchen too. What I wanted to show is originally we had plans to put this over here, right next to the sink. It's right next to the sink where you can, um, you know, you know, fill up a, you know, fill up a container of water, pour it into the filter, and and you've got water right here, uh, and you can have the uh, the spigot hanging over the edge here, and you just fill out of it. The problem was. Mrs. Arkansas Pilgrim wanted to keep the filter looking nice and things kept banging into it when they were washing dishes and because right here is the spot where we put you know washed dishes and uh, you know things that don't go in the dishwasher and she wanted to have this be nice and shiny and not messed up so I had to come up with another way to deal with it well you can get stands for these okay but, uh, and actually getting ahead of myself, well, the thing is, you've got to be able to use this spigot, right? Well, oops, well, I'm around the show. If you have it over, you know, underneath, out of the way, actually, over in the middle of the, of the, uh, of the counter, we have this, uh, this cabinet here. Well, you, you, there's no way that you can get anything under it. You, so what are you going to do? So you can get a stand for it, but if you had a stand for it, the stand well, is might even be too tall to fit that gap. But if you did, then you wouldn't be able to get the lid off very easily and wouldn't be able to pour water into it. So what are you going to do? Well, what I did was I made a, uh, and it's not a redneck build. I probably put this under my playlist and maybe even titled redneck build or redneck repair but it's actually a little bit of engineering and i'll show you what it is and then what it does afterwards it's right here this is a rather than a stand it's a roller but the rollers they're to be honest with you, I'm not even sure what they call these, but uh, you can see how they, they fit on. Normally, they would be screwed to the bottom here, or they might be screwed to a, uh, or uh, put into a big uh, uh, pathway, and like in a manufacturing facility, they actually roll, and you could roll things along, like kind of on, a, not a conveyor belt, but on a, a, a roller table. Well, what it does, See? It moves around and it's really thin. See? Well, I'll just stick below barely and makes it real easy to move. I'm going to go ahead. Uh, now, to make this, you've got to give it, you know, a piece of wood, something, and you have to get some of these little rollers. And I'll put a link to, to the ones that I used uh, that I got from Amazon. They're basically little plastic balls in a stamped sheet metal, you know, holder. Uh, pretty, pretty cheap. They're, you know, they're not the super expensive ones. And I'll, uh, well, I'll show you what, why that's actually important to have the cheaper ones. Um, but uh, let me go ahead and show you how this actually works in use. So here we have the Berkey filter, and now it's on the little roller sled or whatever you want to call that thing. And uh, just to show how easy this works, this is full of water, and I can easily, just with a finger, push it and have it roll back, you know, underneath my uh, the the cabinet there. So now uh, it's. So it rolls back and forth easily. You can bring it to the edge. I don't normally 
when we be grabbing the faucet. It's a plastic faucet, but there's almost no load on it at all. It moves so easily. And it moves easily back again. And one of the important things is that because those are, you know, for lack of a better term, cheap plastic bearings, uh, they have a bit of friction to them. They roll easily, but they don't keep on rolling and have the thing run all the way off and back off the other side of the uh, of the uh, countertop there. So, anyway, hopefully that'll be helpful to you guys, and uh, uh, maybe you can make one for yourself or for if you have your own Berkey water filter. So to make one of these, uh, you're going to have to specifically size it for whatever bearings you get. Um, you need to take a measurement. You can usually use one of these tri-squares uh, because it doesn't actually give you this measurement as part of the specs are. But you take it and get, oops, drive it a little bit farther. Get it flat on the, as flat as you can. Let's get some zoom in here. Flat as you can on here, not on the ball, but on the that there. And oh, loosen it a little bit more. And it doesn't need to be exact, but this is about five eighths, a little bit less. You can see, maybe you can see. Hopefully that's uh, that's clear, but. This needs, you don't want the metal part sticking out below the wood. Now, I happen to have, and it was kind of luck on my part, uh, I happen to have a piece of, uh, this is, you know, some kind of particle board-ish material that's 5 8 thick. Actually, it's a little bit less. That's why it works so well. You can actually even see this uh, there. It's uh, just about, just about perfect. Um... If you get these exact pieces, you need to either use a piece of 5 8 plywood um, or, uh, or whatever material you happen to have. This is like a piece of scrap I saved out of something, which is what a lot of what I have is. This was like, I don't know if it was a big piece that was actually covering our... Um, our stovetop that we have when it was shipped to us when we originally built the house, which was... Geez... 16, 17 years ago. Uh, anyway, whatever material you, you have, you just, you've got to start off with the right size. When you go from there, you need to get the diameter of your Berkey filter. And, uh, and if you have a, a compass, you know, that's fine. But I find uh, that a stick actually works better than a compass um, uh, and better than a string. And uh, this one I think is actually sized for the, uh, for the one I made, but y you'll get the idea. You need to get, uh, you need to get, let's see, as far as, you know, make sure that you're not, you know, overlapping. There we go. Okay, you can pound that in a little if you want, but uh, whatever you need to get the, you know, measure the diameter of what you, uh, uh, whatever circle you want to make, and then have it. You got a radius, you got a nail, pencil in the hole, and lots of stuff in the way, and then you, not sure what's going on here, this was, and there we go. Oh gosh. And another tip. Hey, why don't you clean your bench off first before you try to do anything? Uh, hopefully you can see it, but you got a circle there. Okay. There's your circle. And this is actually smaller than the one that I made, but I mean, you, you get the point. Uh, once you've got your circle, uh, drawn. You can use either a bandsaw, but I mean, not everybody has a bandsaw. But if you are going to be making stuff yourself, one of the things that you need to get is a saber saw. It, you know, many people call it a jigsaw, but that's also another term for a thing called a scroll saw, which is a, a piece of benchtop equipment. But uh, uh, if you have one of these, you can cut 
curves with it. I'm not going to cut this out because uh, I may use this for something else. But uh, uh, this, if you, t uh, and this is also the wrong blade, you need to, actually this blade is maybe not too bad. Uh, be honest with you, I've never been a big fan of these because you have to kind of cut slow with them. And I'm always in too much of a hurry, which if any of you have watched me before, you've probably noticed that's the case. Um, well, I may wait a long time to start something. Once I start, I'm in a hurry. And those two things are uh, probably related. And another thing to remember also is this cuts on the upstroke. It actually moves when it, when it's cutting. It actually cuts up and then goes and it goes down a little bit. It it goes like this. Uh, that being the case. If there's any tear out where it pulls out chunks, that'll happen on the top of wherever you're cutting. So if you want it to, you know, it may not make that much difference, but if you, uh, it's best to have that, this be the bottom side because the top side is actually going to be more visible uh, when, when you're using it. So that's what you do. Get yourself your circle cut. Once you've got your circle cut, um, this is and now this is where a compass comes in handy but it's not all that necessary and uh uh one thing geez see i'm getting ahead of myself it will be marked already by the uh, nail but the center of that circle because that will actually help you down the line down the line uh once you have that center you can take your you take your straight edge, wrong straight edge. Let's get something that, uh, here we go. Jeez. I don't think, I'm not going to edit this either. I'm going to leave this in just so you can see what it's really like to, want well, to be me. Okay, if you take, get there at the center of that circle. I think that was the center, wasn't it? No, it wasn't. There was just a random dot. Get the center of the circle, go and mark actually, you don't even need to do that you just need to mark a spot on the line there if you take and you don't need a uh it's easier with a uh um with a compass but since i don't happen to have a compass handy and a lot of people don't have a compass go ahead and take this and measure your radius see what it is this one actually happens to be four and a quarter take that mark there and then measure off along the circle is going to move it until you get four and a quarter right where it's on the circle that you've drawn. And, of course, that part is where it didn't actually make a, a, a mark on the thing. Mark it there, and then go around the circle. What this will do, well, you'll see what it does. Just go around the circle. Four and a quarter, and oh my gosh, even with good lighting, I still can't see. Oh, that's because the pencil didn't actually draw. Where'd it go? Oh, yeah, it did. Oh, okay. <laughs> Sorry, my life. I've got better lighting than I've ever had, and I still can't see anything. Um, you got to get the right angle to where stuff to show up, especially when you haven't actually made a decent line on the, the, the there we go. I'm going to call that close enough to actually be on the circle. And let's see, even when you got a compass, I've never been able to get this to work out exactly, exactly exact. My gosh, that's so far off, it's ridiculous. Anyway, if you do this with a compass, what you do, the radius of the circle will actually make, go along and make six marks here that will, uh, uh, that will make a hexagon and once you have these little six marks and uh, this isn't critical we're not making like aircraft parts um you got those marks you can go through and draw some lines actually it should actually be across 
That's one way to shorten it is just do three of them. And see that one? Yeah, that one's way off. I I, I screwed up something, but hey, we just saw that. Um, and it, which you, if you do this with uh, the proper measurement instead of on the fly and trying to video and do it at the same time, uh, what you end up with is, let's see, can you see that? I can see it, but I'm not sure if it's showing up on the video. You end up with a nice, you know, evenly spaced six, you know, six, you know, six sections. And as you noticed on the one, you know, the one that I already had built, you know, this is where you put, this is how you locate your six little pieces. Now, the reason... The reason uh, you want six is, I mean, technically three are enough, but if you do three, it can actually tip on the spots where you, on the opposite spots you don't have them. Six gives you a nice level where uh, everything's supported nice and clean. And then you just come in and, you know, whether it's an inch, inch and a half, whatever size is appropriate, and make your marks you know, the same. And then that's where you drill your holes for these. And now we'll get to that. And once you have your, uh, you know, the center points that I showed before, you know, of each, you know, of each uh, uh, bearing marked out, you're going to need to drill the hole. And the thing is, that's a rather large hole. Most people don't have drill bits that big. I mean, you know, a regular drill bit that big. I mean, that's, that's for machinists and stuff. But there is a type of drill bit that the average everyday slob uh, can easily obtain. And they're called spade bits. Now, I actually drilled the holes in the piece, uh, um, in the one that I made. And actually, you can see it right here. I'll just show it to remind everybody. I actually used what's called a Forstner bit, and I'm not going to bother with that right now. But uh, it's a kind of a fancier bit used to get in a set, costs a little bit more. And it's meant for drilling nice, clean holes, large diameter holes in wood. Well, here you have a spade bit, which goes and, and as you can see, will cut, cut a nice big hole. The trick is on these pieces, these specific pieces, and you may... and. <laughs> You may not be able to get uh, something a slightly smaller size. They required a an inch and an eighth hole. Now I have you know this is just a one inch spade bit because uh, you know that's you know one of the ones that normally comes in a, just a set you can buy. But you can buy one and an eighth inch spade bits. I think you can even get them at like Home Depot or Lowe's. You can always order them off Amazon too. But you can buy a single bit that's that size. And they're real easy to use. You can even use them in drills, although they're, I mean, they're pretty aggressive, so you have to be very gentle with them as you use them. Uh, it's always better to use them in a drill press, but one of the reasons I'm doing this is for people that don't have equipment like that. You can use these in uh, a regular hand drill. You just need to be careful because once it actually moves, you know, goes down and these start engaging, you know, it, it's a pretty aggressive cut. So you need to just be very careful. And obviously uh, when you're drilling through, I mean, you know, this is, this is going to go through and have this piece sticking out the bottom. And on any drilling uh, operation. You always need to have a backup so you don't drill into your workbench. But here you're going to need, an, using this kind of bit, you'll need an extra thick backup piece to do it. You know, a couple scrap pieces of two by four, you know, to hold the thing level and, and have one right of them right underneath where you're drilling will be fine. And also, um, well, actually, there's no also. Um, next step after that is you will notice that uh, there's there's kind of a radius right here let's see see that it doesn't go up square there's a little curve once you have the hole drilled you'll need to kind of sand it out or file it out i actually just used a a regular old file and you know scraped on it to so that these will actually sit in the hole 
and then sit flush because even at an inch and an eighth they actually uh this curve will actually hit the edge of the hole so put them in there and there you go and i'll go ahead and show the uh the, the final version again and um if any of you happen, if, if this is helpful for any of you that happen to have a Berkey water filter or something else that you want on a countertop that needs to be moved around easily, uh, I hope it was helpful. God bless you all. See you next time.